Welcome to the Winter Collection Plashing Show, featuring the Plumeria giving us a single leaf barely hanging on skinny stick realness look. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you, my name is Christian and I'm a plant. And in today's video, I wanna do a bit of a winter growth update. A couple of months ago, I did a video for newbies on how to survive your first winter, sharing a bit of tips on how to make sure that you and your plants come out of the winter time unscathed or at least with minimal plant loss. Although those tips do help, the reality is some of your plants will still go through and experience a bit of winter growth. So in today's video, I wanna share with you guys a few house plants that are going through a bit of that winter growth compared to what they look like during the summer and then share with you guys what I plan to do with them from now until the winter months to really get them ready to ensure that they are gonna be healthy and strong as we kind of head towards the spring and growing season. And then near the end of this video, I wanna share with you guys a few house plants that are not phased at all by the winter months and they are doing well and thriving. These are great plants to actually get for those of you guys who are starting, who don't have plants but wanna get plants during the winter months. I recommend those plants. So without further ado, we'll get started. We'll start with the, ta-da! This is my ficus benjabina. And when I got this over the summer, it was so nice full and lush and even a lot brighter and greener than what you see today. You can see that he's dropped a lot of leaves compared to what he looked like before. Definitely a lot at the bottom and you can even see a lot of dead leaves here collecting at the top of the pot. Now, I am finding that this did not drop leaves when I first got it during the summer months, even though a lot of people warned me that they typically do drop leaves. During the summer months, I had this located here by my string of hearts and it was doing fine, getting a lot of that south, you know, bright indirect light, not too close. However, during the winter months, when the sun isn't as intense and the days are shorter, I did decide to move this closer to the window to ensure that it gets a lot more light. And I was also mindful to make sure that I wasn't overwatering this plant. However, as we kind of got through the winter months and the days got shorter, the leaves kept dropping. And it's not as bad as um, what I've seen out there, but definitely not as full as what he looked like. The branches here are still fairly strong and still alive, obviously. He's just dropping leaves. So he is showing a bit of new growth at the tips there, but they're not growing, obviously, as fast as they normally would have during the summer months. So what I plan to do for the rest of the winter is actually just leave it in the same location. Maybe move it back a couple feet so that way it's not too close to the window in case we get a lot of those colder months where that window pane sometimes can get a bit chilly. Uh, just to make sure that it is nice and warm. The one thing I am mindful of with this particular plant though is because I do have my heater on, it's a lot drier in here. The soil does tend to get a little bit fast because this is a very well airy and draining soil. So I gotta be mindful to not have this sitting in dry soil for long periods of time because it, that can also cause a lot of the leaves to drop when it gets really dry. So very mindful of that, but that is what I plan to do for the rest of the winter months. And then come spring, I am planning on maybe like notching this particular plant so that way it can promote growth at the bottom because I don't want it to look bare or maybe grow it a little longer and then have that nice bare stem. I haven't decided yet. Good thing about ficus plants is they are quite resilient. I've owned a few of them in the past, different varieties, you guys know, which makes them honestly one of my favorite genus of plants. But uh, yeah, so this is what my ficus benjamina is currently at. The next couple plants I wanna show you guys are a little bit undecided on whether they wanna go dormant or dead. It is the, ta-da, my Exalus triangularis. So this plant, all of them, the purple one, uh, my green one, which pretty much looks dead at this point, and my other green one that has a few leaves. Uh, they are not looking good at all. They look extremely raggedy. They are not sure what to do. So I typically have these guys close to my south facing window by the ficus lirata just underneath there. So it does get a lot of that bright indirect south facing light. However, I do find that the winter days here in Toronto is a lot more darker and cloudier than say other cities out in Canada. Like Winnipeg, for example, has a lot more brighter and sunnier days. Even though it's colder there, I do prefer their winter months. So this plant is struggling to kind of keep all of its foliage together. You know, what it looked like during the summer when it was nice and full. You can see there's a couple of growth here because I am trying to keep this one awake throughout the winter. It does want to go dormant because the Xalus Trianglers grow from like a bulb or a tuber style. Um, they can go dormant during the winter months and it's fine for them to go dormant. You can just wake them up during the springtime when you want to. But I prefer to not put mine 
to sleep or go dormant just in case they never wake up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut all the leaves back, even the ones that are alive but are just really leggy. We're gonna keep the new growth in. And then I'm gonna move these guys upstairs closer to my window on top of my greenhouse. So that way it gets a little bit more light because it is elevated higher. This particular area does get a lot of light, however, because the sun is a little lower, it's a lot shorter. In addition, I got a wall here, like a partial wall that's kind of blocking a bit of the view. So that is limiting a bit of the sunlight. So I do want to just maximize it a bit more by just moving it upstairs. And then I want to make sure I give this a nice good drink because the soil is extremely dry right now. And again, you want to make sure that the soil on your oxalis is not completely dried out. And then I want to make sure that, you know, I just monitor keep this guy awake, keep it alive, and then come spring, it's gonna flourish again, grow to a nice big full foliage like once we had during the growing season. So that is the plan for Axalis, and yeah, they are not, they, you know, sometimes if you're not familiar with Axalis, you can mistake this to be dead, and you can just easily throw it out. But again, these typically like to go dormant during the winter months. But as long as you can provide the growing conditions, you guys can continue to keep these alive all year long. And even some really looking nice and full. I have a friend who's got one actually at his place and uh, he lives in the basement, gets south facing window and his is so full still. So uh, again, you just need to provide the nice growing condition and uh, they can continue to grow all year long. So next plant I wanna show you guys is the, ta-da, the Pilia peperomiotis. So this particular plant is going through a couple of issues right now. Uh, first of all, he is a bit overgrown to the size of pot he's in right now. And if you guys remember during the summer months, we actually removed a couple of the big babies to give it a bit more space and room so that way they're not fighting for the space within the soil because this does need to be repotted soon. But what's happening with this during the winter months is it is dropping a lot of leaves, even though this typically does drop a lot of leaves in the base, but it's getting higher and higher. And now it looks weird with this like ball at the top and then this base at the bottom, which isn't as bad as I thought it was. The more I look at it, I'm like, you know what? It's not bad, it's a little unique. It looks like he's got like this disco ball hanging and then all these babies right here are partying and dancing. I'm just kidding, but uh, he is definitely going through a bit of a, a struggle right now. And I do plan on repotting this come spring. I'm actually debating if I'm gonna remove all the babies and keep just the mother plant because now that I look at it, I can actually probably turn this into more of a tree, have this nice thick trunk as the base and then have this thing kind of grow out. Maybe we'll keep a few of the babies, who knows, but the main thing for me right now is try and just keep this one alive as long as I can, especially as we kind of get through the rest of the winter months. So for me, it's making sure he still gets a lot of bright and direct light. He's located here in my living room, close to that south facing window. Always have been in this location since he was a young pup. Even though one of the winter care tips is to cut back on your watering because your plants do tend to grow a little bit slower and they tend to take a little longer to dry out. However, with this particular plant, I gotta actually keep an eye on making sure that that soil isn't going to be dry for long periods of time because this does still dry out pretty quickly even during the winter months. And the reason being is because there's a lot of plants. There's a gazillion plants in this particular pot and it's literally fighting for all that moisture. So I just gotta make sure that I'm staying on top of my watering. And again, my rule of thumb is just making sure that that soil is, you know, 90, 95% completely dry before I do give this a good drink uh, because, you know, I do wanna minimize the amount of leaves that's dropping because it does look really cool as a nice fall plant, but again, this actually is starting to look cool. It's starting to grow on me. So, uh, you know, I can even do magic here, look. Whoa, I'm just kidding. So we'll definitely do a video when we do repot this guy because that's gonna be a challenge. But for the most part, I think he's doing okay. I know he's not the prettiest right now, especially compared to what he looked like during the summer, or even the spring of last year. But his look is kind of growing on me. You know, I actually don't mind this like ball at the top here bear and then all these babies at the bottom but uh yeah so the next plant i want to share with you guys is actually what leggy growth looks like it is the ta-da my <laughs> did that leaf just drop <laughs> wow okay this, that that's what happens during the winter it is my peperomia frost so this plant is going through a few winter issues you know you just saw a leaf drop there so it is dropping a bit of leaves not as full as it was once during the summer months Although there are signs of new growth and new leaves on this plant, they are a lot smaller than what they were doing during the growing season. In addition, this plant is growing a bit tall and a bit leggy, and you guys can see how long these petioles are to what they were doing during the summer months when they were a little shorter, a little bit more compact, which did make it a look a lot more fuller rather than the sparse look it's got going on right now. So this does typically happen to a lot of your plants, especially during the winter months because they are trying to reach for that light. 
even though I do have this closer to my south facing window because I did move it closer to that window, it is in that middle shelf. So it is getting a bit of shade from the rest of the plants that's on top of that shelf. So I do plan on moving this one upstairs and I am also gonna place this on top of my greenhouse or on top of that floating shelf to try and elevate it a bit more and maximize the lighting this can get. I don't plan on actually cutting this plant back. I'm just gonna leave it as is, you know, remove a lot of the dead leaves. Just make sure that the watering is consistent and I don't have this sitting in dry soil for long periods of time causing a lot more of that leaves to drop or I don't also overwater this, causing a lot of those leaves to drop. Again, I just wanna keep this one alive, keep it healthy, and then come spring, we're actually gonna repot this to maybe a six inch, because it is in this four inch container, to try and give it a bit more space for those roots to grow, especially when we head into kind of the growing and active season. So that is what I'm gonna do with my Peperomia frost. And again, a beautiful Peperomia, one of my favorites. I just love the frosted, you know, blue foliage this thing has. So uh, man, um, I remember I went to the store for for this back because I saw it. I didn't get it because I got it the same time as I got the Benjamina. I took the Benjamina home and then like five minutes later, I drove back to Home Depot and got the Peperonia Frost. So I definitely want to make sure um, this is going to thrive come spring. So those are a few plants that are experiencing a bit of the winter growth. You guys can see what dropping leaves looks like, what legginess looks like, or what a plant that wants to go dormant looks like with the Exalis. Now I want to show you guys a few house plants that are not phased at all during the winter months. They, they are living their best life. So I want to start with the Ta-da! The aloe vera. So this big boy right here could care less what time of the year it is or what season it is because it is just living its best life. It's growing really well during the summer months. I do find that it is growing a lot faster and bigger. However, during the winter months, I am also noticing this new leaf that's growing from the top. And then all the babies here are still thriving and looking really, really good. I actually moved this back from my south facing window because that's where it was during the summer months. But because I want to make space for a lot more of my smaller plants, I moved this back actually hanging out here by my kitchen and it's doing really well. It's doing really fine. So it is one of those plants that honestly is the easiest plant you can ever care for. Similar to a ZZ plant, a ponytail palm or a snake plant. Uh, I do always recommend an aloe vera for beginners because uh, they, they are really, really easy to care for. They're hard to kill as long as you're not over watering. So you do gotta be mindful that the potting soil you are using is cacti soil with a lot of perlite. And just making sure that you are only watering when that soil is completely dry. So stick your fingers in there or use a moisture meter. But uh, definitely one of my favorite plants because I also grew this from like a baby plant and uh, it's one of those plants that means so much to me. And I really like this um, upside down kind of a uh, octopus or sea urchin like he's got going on, but a uh, pretty cool plant. And then the next plant I wanna share with you guys, it's also not phased at all by the winter months. It is the, ta-da, the ZZ plant. So as I mentioned, similar to the aloe, all my ZZs, whether it's a uh, raven, the Zenzi, or even my traditional ZZ plant, they are all doing well during the winter months, not experiencing any winter growth. I mean, they're so stable and so consistent. Um, you know, you don't obviously expect a lot of new growth or fast growth when it comes to ZZ plants, but for the most part, you know, they are healthy all year long. You can't go wrong with them. They're great for beginners, easy to care for. They can thrive in pretty much any lighting condition, and that's why these plants typically aren't phased by the winter months when the days are shorter and that sun isn't as bright or as intense because, you know, they can, they can tolerate low light. I barely water these guys during the summer summer months, I think it was like once every three weeks, very little watering, make sure that water drains through. And then during the winter months, I go about like once every month or every four weeks. And uh, yeah, they're, they're living their best life. Again, you can't go wrong with a ZZ plant. So the next plant I wanna share you guys is actually one of my favorite house plants. I did not move its location at all. It's staying in the same location all year long, but it is actually doing really, really well this winter. It is the, ta-da, my string of hearts. You guys can see that's been in this location since I first got this plant. And it is doing really, really well this winter season. It looks so full. It's still growing. You can see it's all the way down to the floor now. It is a bit tangled down there, so I do need to spend some time untangling it. Although the leaves are a little smaller than the ones a little higher up here. And that's because obviously there's a lot more sun that's kind of like, you know, hitting the top of the plant versus lower to the ground. So I do find that the leaves there are a little bit smaller and they are a little bit more leggier or the internose or the interleaves length is a lot wider than what they are at the top. So that is the only winter kind of experience or growth it's doing, but it's so healthy and I'm so happy it's doing well this winter season. So my winter care for this plant is just pretty much cutting back my watering. During the summer months, I would water this like every two weeks. 
Now I would do it every three weeks because there is still a lot of plants there and the soil is, you know, cacti based, well draining, a lot of perlite. So it does dry out pretty quickly. So I just gotta make sure that I don't have this, you know, sitting in dry soil for long periods of time uh, because there was a point where I almost did actually kill this. Uh, the leaves were really, really soft. So they were starting to drop. So good thing I caught it in time, gave it a nice good drink and it is now uh, living its best life again. But yeah, so that is my string of hearts. I would say most of my plants that are on my bookshelf that you guys see here are doing all well. So I'm not giving them any additional lighting from a grow light. They're just here, close to my south facing window. So the neon pothos is doing well. My jade satin synapses are doing well. The silvery ant synapses are doing well. The hoyas are doing well. So they're not experiencing like leaves dropping or losing a lot of foliage. Although the growth is a little bit slower, but that's okay, you know, as long as they remain healthy, they keep their foliage, they look nice and full still. Now uh, come spring, these guys are just gonna take off and start growing again. So there you guys have it. Those are just a few houseplant updates that are going through a bit of the winter growth and the winter blues. Gives you guys a bit of an idea on what they look like and what I plan to do as we kind of head into the winter season. And then obviously a few houseplants are not phased at all by the winter months. They are living their best lives regardless what season it is. Comment below and let me know if you have a few houseplants that are also going through a bit of the winter blues and also share a few of your houseplants that are doing well during the winter months. Other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, learned a thing or two, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.